So this is what Duke Cayenne looks like from up close. It's hard to believe that I've ended up in the same room as the leader of the Noble Alliance. Although, I guess we did meet back in Legram before the war broke out. Reen Schwarzer. Truth be told, we don't want this war to drag on any more than you do. Uh, really? We only acted as we did due in part to our dearly departed Chancellor's behavior being far too unreasonable to justify turning a blind eye. He garnered the trust of His Majesty, and in turn misused that trust. He flagrantly disregarded this nation's beloved culture and traditions, treating Erebonia as if it were his own personal property. Surely you too noticed this. Well... I can't say I disagree. We did hear story after story during our field studies about how aggressive his policies were. About the way he didn't care how many enemies he made as a result, creating terrorist groups at the Imperial Liberation Front. But as I said, the cause of our nation's ills is now gone. Now, all that remains is to turn back the hands of time just a touch, and the good old days of the Empire will be upon us once more. The key to this bright future lies in putting aside our differences and joining hands. Am I wrong? I'm afraid that yes, you are. Do you honestly believe that people can so easily put aside their differences after all the Alliance has done? You occupied Heimdall and effectively took every one of its citizens hostage, imprisoned the Imperial family. And let's not forget how you're now in league with the enemy nation responsible for the destruction of Gorelia Fortress. After all that, the Imperial Army would never bow their heads to the likes of you, even if the rest of the population did. <laughs> My word! I'm afraid there's been a terrible misunderstanding. The Imperial family is simply under our loving protection. They certainly haven't been in prison. But that does bring me to exactly why I want you to help us. It does? The Azure Knight is already on our side. But if we had your Ashen Knight as well, that would mean we'd have two of the great knights of Erebonian legend to put into play. Couple them with our Panzer Soldats, and the Imperial Army's armored divisions would cower before us. You may not find us winning the war ideal, but this union benefits everyone more than carrying on until our inevitable victory, hmm? I don't think it's that simple. I beg to differ. The presence of Soldats units on a battlefield makes a tremendous difference. What they may lack in firepower and armor compared to tanks, they make up for in mobility and versatility. But more important than even those factors is the psychological impact they have on our opponents. Well... We're only human. As such, we are as captivated as we are terrified of giant beings bearing human form. And if that holds true even for mass-produced soldats made with modern technology, it will be all the more true for the divine knights of legend you and Crow possess. Can't argue with that logic. <sighs> I will say it once more. Gilead Osborne is dead. With his death, all that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. 
That includes both your pleasant academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the princess. <gasps> Are you trying to... Whatever you ultimately decide, their safety is guaranteed. I would ask that you promise him this, if nothing else, Your Grace. <laughs> but of course, I'm not a monster. Rufus. We may stand on opposite sides of this conflict, but I still sit on Thor's board of directors. And in that capacity, I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. All that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, Every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. It's hard to argue that this war began because the noble faction went too far. But the longer it goes on, the more people are going to suffer. Am I really okay with that? If I join them, I could reduce the number of victims be friends with Crow again? Free Elise and Princess Elfin? No, this isn't that simple! Think, Rain, think! I was able to reunite with the others, but Elise and Princess Elfin are still in the Alliance's custody. What's the best thing I can do? This isn't just about me. What do all of us want to do? Keep racking your brain like that and smoke will start coming out of your ears. <clears throat> what do you want? Hey now, no need to give me that look. I figured I was gonna find you busy thinking everything over like your life depended on it. And what do you know? I was right. How about you mind your own damn business? And don't you have better things to do with your time? I figured the glorious Azure Chevalier would be far too busy with the war to be hanging out around here. <laughs> it's tough being popular. If you joined us, I could get away with doing half the work I am now. So come on, stop freaking out about it so much and make a choice. This isn't something I can just decide by flipping a coin, Crow! And 
Besides, it'd probably be an easier choice if not for a certain someone. What's that in your hand, anyway? Grub, of course. Kinda early, but I brought you your lunch. Mind if I join you? Hamburgers, fries, and onion rings, huh? I was expecting something more fancy like I had last night. Oh, that kind of food more your thing? Okay then, give me a minute while I go ask the chef to whip something up. No, this is fine. The burger looks delicious. Cool. All right, dig in. This tastes kind of different from a normal burger. Oh, no wonder. It's got whitefish in it. Yeah, they're called fish burgers. Pretty good, right? Yeah, the tartar sauce makes for an unusual extra flavoring, too. This tastes amazing. I like this way more than the food I had last night, to be honest. Well, glad to hear. Guess it was worth putting my cooking skills to the test after all. Wait, you made this? It was my first time cooking in a while, too. Sharon could probably do better, though. But I wanted to give it a shot anyway. This stuff was like soul food back in dry where I grew up. Oh. To think, all the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust from the Jirai SEZ. Oh, yeah. Vita was using some weird thing of hers to let you see what was going on, wasn't she? So I guess you saw what happened there. Yeah. Jirai was that special economic zone in the Northwest you guys went to during our August field study, too. So you ended up going back to your old hometown then? Yeah, by pure coincidence. It's changed a lot since I was last there, so it was kind of surreal being back again. But it was nostalgic in its own way too. It's been bugging me for a long time now. What could have made you want to join a group of terrorists like the Imperial Liberation Front? What was it that made you hate Chancellor Osborne that much? Enough to take his life? <sighs> Tell me, Crow. Please. I want to know what it was that made you who you are now. What kind of place Jirai was? How you lived there? And what you were doing before you entered the Academy and met Toa, Angelica, and George. <laughs> Where's the fun in prying into a guy's past? Save all that talk for your number one in class. Who's the lucky girl anyway? Elisa? Laura? Emma? Fee? And don't tell me it's Milliam, because, you know, it... I'm serious, Crow. I really want to know. Think of telling me your past is paying off the interest you owe in that 50 Mira. Because until I know, until we know, we won't be able to move forward. You're really serious. Crow? My past really isn't that big of a deal, you know. 
It's got nothing on yours, that's for sure. If you find yourself thinking that's all when I'm done, well, I warned you. So, you really want to know? Yeah. Nothing you say will change my mind. Please, tell me. <sighs> all right, you win. Like I said, it's just your run-of-the-mill sob story. Pick up any history textbook and you'll probably find a dozen others just like it. It's the kind of story that's so common no one bothers to remember it, like it never even happened. Back in those days, Jirai was known as Dry City. It was a city-state off the coast of northwest Zemuria that prospered through maritime trade with West Arabonia, North Ambria, and Remiferia. It had a population of around 150,000 people, so it wasn't exactly a big place or anything. Because of that, the surrounding nations left it alone and let us live out our days in peace. We were pretty fortunate, all things considered. Until about 20 years ago. That was when the North Ambrian disaster struck, and much of the Principality of North Ambria was turned to salt. And as a result, trade on the Northwest Shore was reduced to virtually nothing. Day after day, Jirai's prosperity started to fade away. Still, it wasn't all bad. We had our fishing, our historic landmarks, our septium mines. We could make use of those to get trade going again, both to keep our state running and to help out North Ambria. In fact, the one who advocated that approach was the mayor, my grandfather. He was the last mayor Jirai City ever had. <laughs> he was a stubborn old bastard, but he had this wry sense of humor and was well loved by everyone. I lost my mom and dad early, so he was also my only living relative. <laughs> he taught me just about everything a guy could know. He was like a mom, dad, and your old master rolled into one, I guess. Anyway, fast forward to ten years ago. Out of nowhere, we received this proposal from the Erebonian government. They said they wanted to extend a railway line from Heimdall all the way to Jirai. We relied on the sea for trade before but there wasn't any reason to believe we couldn't benefit from being connected to Heimdall by rail. The proposal drew overwhelming support from the city's council, and as a result, my grandfather was forced to accept. Within a year, the city had all of its old life back and then some. The streets were more bustling than ever. But keep in mind, this was the result of huge amounts of imperial capital flowing into the city. Land and buildings we once treasured were bought up left and right. Everything became a target for investment. People only cared about making money. Something similar supposedly happened in Crossbell too, but unlike there, no opposition existed in Jirai. My grandfather sensed something was off, and he tried what he could to get the situation under control. Then one day, someone blew up the railway line leading to Jirai. Everyone demanded that it be repaired as quickly as possible. Everyone except the imperial government. Instead, they panned our national security arrangements for being insufficient and threatened to withdraw all imperial capital. The city was left in an uproar like we'd never seen. Shares plummeted. And with no one able to ascertain the culprit's identity, chaos reigned. That was when he showed up. Chancellor Gilliath Osborne, in his third year as representative of the imperial government, personally came to Jirai. We then received a second proposal. The restoration of the railway and its future security will be seen to by the Imperial Army. 
In return for our continued assistance and safekeeping, Jirai will come under the wing of our glorious empire and attain even greater prosperity as a special economic zone. The timing was too good to be true, really. Realizing this, my grandfather staunchly opposed the idea. He tried everything he could to convince the city's council to reject the offer. Unfortunately, once you taste the sweet fruit of prosperity, it's hard to want to go back. The council, made up of influential merchants and all their greed, jumped at the offer. And tempted by the elimination of customs, together with the tax breaks from being an SEZ, many of the citizens did too. And during all that, they'd conveniently found a suspect behind the railway incident. My grandfather. He loved Jirai more than anyone, and up till then, its people loved him too. And yet, virtually overnight, he found himself facing the wrath of both the city's council and the citizens alike. Left with no choice, he resigned from his position as mayor, and Jirai formally became part of the empire. Both of these things happened on the same exact day. That was eight years ago. Naturally, everyone knew my grandfather wasn't the one who did it. They knew who was really responsible. They just turned a blind eye to the truth. See, I warned you. Just your run-of-the-mill sob story. I don't know what to say, Crow. Ugh. What happened to him after that? Your grandfather? One day, he just up and died. <sighs> Once he resigned, the whole affair with the railway getting blown up was all but forgotten. He lived comfortably in retirement for about half a year, fell ill, and that was that. He just lost the will to go on, I guess. Like I said, he was the only family I had. I mean, I had plenty of friends even then, but I chose to leave it all behind. I was 13 at the time. I wandered the land, doing whatever I had to to get by. That was when I met old Cayenne, who happily indulged my hatred for the Chancellor. And with his financial backing, I went out with the goal to find others who were just like me. That was the beginning of the Imperial Liberation Front. Gideon, Scarlet, and Vulcan were among those I recruited. I had also met Vita then. I only knew her as the woman who would often come to see Cayenne. She guided me to a place below the city of Ortis, and there slept the Azure Knight Ordeen. One after another, I overcame the same trials you did with your friends, but alone. And once I'd proven myself worthy, Ordeen accepted me as his awakener. That was three years ago. I was 16. My preparations complete, I concealed my background and enrolled in a military academy near the capital. Everything I did, I did for the sole purpose of taking the Chancellor's head. Come on now, what's with the face? You look sadder about all this than I do. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I swear. I'm not trying to tell you the Chancellor was evil or anything. What? Still, there's no denying that he managed to outwit my grandfather. 
And he may have lost, but Pops always loved a good gamble. It's thanks to him that I'm pretty good at chess, card games, that kind of stuff. I'd say it's fairly normal for a student to want to avenge his master's defeat, wouldn't you? Maybe. At the end of the day, there's no denying this country has problems, and the Chancellor's methods were making them worse. I studied those problems, worked out how to use the situation to my advantage, and then won the game with an all-or-nothing gamble. But when you think of how peaceful Jirai is now, I'd say I've got a duty to clear up the mess left behind by my game too, which means ending this war and restoring peace. So it's only when that's done that my game is truly over. <sighs> I don't want whatever your decision is to be influenced by my past, okay? Like Rufus said, you need to think long and hard about what it is you're fighting for. For you, more than anyone else. Yeah, but... Crow... Anyway, I think I've stuck around here for long enough. You're gonna be treated as a visitor. Well, sort of. It's about time for the higher-ups to head back to Heimdall, so go ahead and pass the time however you want. However I want? What else can I even do here? There'll be no guards outside your room, so if you want to try and escape, be my guest. Just keep in mind that some members of Ouroboros and Zephyr are on board too. Not to mention me, Scarlet, and Vulcan. So if you're up for a gamble of your own, get ready to take all of us on. Sounds fun. Oh yeah, one more thing. There's this real cute visitor in the guest of honor's room on the second floor. I think she'd perk right up if she saw you, so why not go pay her a visit? Just don't go making your girl jealous, okay? I wonder who he means. He said she's in the guest of honor's room. Well, I can't waste much time here. I told everyone I'd definitely come back soon. Right now, I need to gather as much information as I can. I can make my choice after that. At least then, it'll be an informed one. Send someone inside. Huh? It's open. Come on in. That sounds like. Excuse me. Oh, it's you. Finish talking with C? His name's Crow, not C. And he's never going to be anything else for me. <laughs> oh, I know his real name. But to us, he's always gonna be C. That's our leader. 
He might be young, but each and every one of us look up to him and respect him. Anyway, take a seat. You got a whole lot of questions, I bet. Does you asking that mean you're willing to answer them? <laughs> Depends on the questions. Just out of curiosity, how many members does the Imperial Liberation Front have left? I know the explosion back in the mine was staged, obviously. Sure was. Anyway, uh, ten, give or take? We lost most of our members as soon as the war started kicking into gear. Oh. Is that because the group's primary objective had been fulfilled? Basically, yeah. We all came from different backgrounds, but the one thing we had in common was that we hated that bastard's guts. So after he'd kicked it, most of the guys didn't really have any reason for sticking around. Can't say I blame him for calling it quits. Crow said that seeing this war through to its end was the last part of his game. Are the members who haven't left sticking around for similar reasons? <laughs> Interesting question. Can't speak for the others, but me? I don't really care how this war goes. I mean, I'm a former Jaeger who can hold his own in a fight. I've always lived for war. Teaching those dumbasses in the provincial armies how to pilot soldats is a job worth doing, even if it's a pain. If we disband, I'll find myself something else to do. I see. I can't defend the assassination of the Chancellor or what you did near Trista. But I'd be happy if you chose to disband at least. You're a funny kid. Being oddly nice to us after all the shit we caused, don't you think? The cycle of hatred's gone on for long enough. The crimes you've committed will never vanish, but no one wants this war to go on longer than it has to. It's not as though you guys want war, do you? <laughs> That's enough of the niceties. If you've got time to worry about us, use it to worry about yourself. Whether you choose to side with the Alliance or go against them, you've got a tough road ahead, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Make sure to think long and hard before you decide. And if we end up as enemies again, show me what you got. On the battlefield, I mean. Excuse me. <laughs> Think I might have been too harsh on the kid. Still... Yeah. He's probably perfect for the job. He saw right through me. He's not wrong, though. I should be worrying about myself right now. He seemed kind of different, though. Like he'd lost his spark. His sole objective in life seemed to be to get revenge for his old Jaeger Corps killed by Osborne. Maybe he's just not sure what to do with himself now that he's done just that? I can sense someone inside. And judging by the fact that V is in the next room,
Hmm? Come on in if you like. Excuse me. Hello there, love. I'd heard you came on board yesterday, so I did wonder whether we would run into one another at some point. Hello, Scarlet. Last time we spoke was a month and a half ago near Trista, I think. Quite a memorable day for both of us, wasn't it? There's no need to stand over there. Come and have a seat. I'll pour us some tea. It, you really don't have to. <laughs> well, I guess there's no harm in chatting for a bit. These tea leaves really are wonderful, aren't they? Only the best for the airship of Erebonia's most powerful noble, I suppose. I have to admit, the fragrance is like no tea I've ever had before. You're right, though. It makes sense if it's something Duke Cayenne personally chose. Oh? I was under the impression that your family is a part of the nobility, too. Your father is a baron, isn't he? He might be a noble, but generally barons aren't all that wealthy. We live a relatively modest lifestyle. <laughs> oh, really? I wouldn't have thought it before, but maybe my family was actually more well-off than yours. And Scarlet! I heard she lost her old hometown when he went and built a railway through it. What kind of family did you come from, then? Oh, they weren't nobles, if that's what you're wondering. They were just relatively wealthy farmers. We were almost local celebrities, in a way. Oh, I see. <laughs> you're wondering how someone like me became a terrorist? It's written all over your face. Well, I can't deny that I'm curious. I heard that you lost your hometown because Osborne built a railway through it. Oh, did C tell you? No, I suppose it must have been V. He never was one to keep quiet about things. So, I mean, what happened? Some things are best left unsaid, I think. It's not as if knowing would somehow allow you to change things. I suppose. <laughs> You're so adorable, Reen. Now I know why C took a liking to you. What do you say? How about you come and fight with me and the other big girls and boys? It'll be fun, I promise. Please, stop teasing me. Anyway, thank you for the tea. It wasn't just made with high-quality leaves. It was brewed exceptionally, too. <laughs> You're very welcome. Oh, actually, I may as well ask while I have the chance. Where did you learn how to use that weapon of yours anyway? It's pretty unique. Oh, that? I suppose it can't hurt to tell you. The holy city of Arteria. The Arteria? Where the high seat of the Septian Church is? That's the one. It's called a Templar Sword, and it's a traditional weapon in the church. A few years ago, I was studying to be a sister and was trained in how to use it there. Surely you must be talking about some other church, right? You're telling me there are sisters in the Septian Church who use weapons like that? <laughs> it 
There are more things in this world you don't know than you could possibly imagine. Well, it doesn't matter much now. I ended up returning to Erebonia before my training was complete. Oh? Anyway, that's all I'm telling you for now. I'll give you the full story if you decide to join us. Sound fair? And if you choose not to join? Well, that way has its own charms, I suppose. She ended up being a lot friendlier than I expected her to be. I wonder how much of what she was saying about being a sister was true. She seemed to really hate the Chancellor. I wonder what she intends to do now that he's gone. To you, Reen Schwarzer. What the? You're the Phantom Thief! You sure look comfortable. What are you doing here? Ha <laughs> ha! Why wouldn't I be? I'm as much a guest on this ship as you are. And who would deny themselves the pleasure of a ship so beautiful? The furnishings are immaculate. The food and wine are positively sumptuous. And I am of the firm belief that it's wasteful not to take advantage of the opportunities life presents you. Ah, and speaking of opportunities, don't just stand there. Take a seat and join me in having a drink. You've been blessed with the rare chance to sit and chat one-on-one -on -one with the most beloved thief of our time. I can't believe that's how you describe yourself. Well, what the hell. I'll have a drink. Nothing alcoholic, though. Funny. I didn't realize you'd met Prince Oliver. Ha! Indeed. There are few even among royals whose palate is so refined as his. Between our shared love of beauty and fundamental difference of opinion on the nature of love, he forever remains an endless source of entertainment for me. I suddenly feel very sorry for him. What happened down in Liberal sounds pretty amazing, though. I'd heard there were problems with orbital technology in Southern Erebonia at the time, but I had no idea that was why. Ha <laughs> ha! That magnificent floating city was quite the sight to behold, let me tell you. Oh, how I wish I could have shown it to you. It would have changed your view of the world completely. It really does sound amazing. Wait, why am I sitting here having a friendly discussion with a wanted criminal? He has so many interesting and unusual stories, I got completely caught up listening to them. Ha <laughs> ha! A thief of my caliber can steal much more than objects, Reen. There, I was able to steal much of your time and your interest. Perhaps I stole your heart as well. Rest assured, that did not happen. Your stories were interesting, though, I'll admit. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know where Prince Oliver is now, would you? Last I checked, he wasn't actively fighting against the Alliance. 
<laughs> I imagine Duke Cayenne would welcome a man like the Prince with open arms into the Alliance, if he so wished to join. To my knowledge, he was always wary of the Chancellor himself. But I digress. I'm afraid not even I know where he is at the moment. However, I'm inclined to believe that wherever he's hiding, the Crimson Wings is there with him. So the Courageous is missing too, then. Although the Duke's got some nerve if he expects Prince Oliver to side with him after he imprisoned the rest of the Imperial family. But think. These kinds of things are simply what the great nobles of this country have always done. The War of the Lions, too, was brought about by numerous families of some standing backing potential successors to the throne. Emperor Dreykels, as a late arrival to the war, was a mere exception to the rule. <laughs> I wonder... Does Prince Olivert think himself as the second coming of Dreykels? One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. I don't think he does. From what I can tell, he intends to try and end this war in a slightly different way from Dreykel's. Oh? Do tell. Sorry, but I should be going. Thanks for all the interesting stories. They helped me work through things in my head a bit. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm pleased to hear it. I will be waiting at the edge of my seat to hear which path you choose. Join us, and you'll be warmly welcomed. Naturally, I'm fascinated by you as the Ashen Knight's pilot. But I'm even more fascinated with that brute strength of yours. I would love the chance to see the power of an ogre up close. I doubt it's half as interesting as what you're thinking. Anyway, if you'll excuse me. Travel to and from Crossbell like this is utterly exhausting. No, I mustn't complain. I'm doing this for the sake of my lord. Um, didn't I see her in the gram? Who goes there? Wait, you're the Ashen Knight's pilot. I remember you now. You're with Ouroboros. Duvali the Swift, right? Have you no shame? Is it perhaps normal for you to barge into a lady's room unannounced? You and that Arsade are only as bad as each other, I swear! Learn your place! Actually, I just walked through the door normally. I should have probably knocked before I came in, though. Sorry about that. So, now that we're understood, what do you want? Have you come to tell me that you'll be fighting on our side after all? Can you not jump to conclusions? Besides, it's not like you're working with the Alliance because you agree with what they're doing. Oh, naturally. 
Lady Clotilde seems to have a purpose of her own. But for my part, I have no obligation to help the Alliance whatsoever. I'm simply cooperating because I was told doing so was necessary to the plan. Plan? I'm not sure what she's getting at. Just so we're clear, that lord you keep mentioning isn't Vita Clotilde, is it? No. She may be an Anguist like her, but my lord is the Seventh, not the Second. She is the leader of the Stallridder. The great light which guides us. Gallant yet beautiful. Proud yet merciful. She's the strongest knight of all. And oh, she's simply divine. Well, you've made it clear how great you think she is. So the head of the Stall Ritter is also a woman? She certainly is. And if you must know, a hundred swordsmen of your strength couldn't hope to equal her. No, a thousand, even ten thousand of you wouldn't be able to so much as scratch her. Okay, I get it. She's strong. Still, if she's a woman who could be described as the strongest knight of all, Laura already noticed the similarity between the Eisenritter and Stallritter, but she really does sound like Saint Sandlot. See, I've got you thinking. Incidentally, I may have already mentioned her title, but one can never share my lord's glory too many times. She's known as the Steel Maiden. The Steel Maiden, huh? And with that, I believe that's enough idle chatter. If you didn't come to tell me that you'll be fighting on our side, then we remain enemies. As such, we shouldn't be standing here being friendly with one another. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Sorry for bothering you. Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to ask. You're not an enforcer like Blue Blanc or Sharon, right? Is there any reason for that? Ugh, you just had to ask. Enforcers are selected by the Society's leader. The Grand Master. And in order to be selected as one and given a number, that person needs to be burdened by some kind of darkness. But just so we're clear, there is no correlation between having a number and one's strength, alright? I'm quite strong! I didn't say you weren't. But it makes perfect sense. You don't strike me as someone who's carrying any kind of darkness with you. You're refreshingly... sincere. Like someone who hates anything that strays from the path of righteousness. Uh, I'll thank you not to spout such nauseating drivel in my presence! Now get the hell out of my room! She chased me out. I'm really curious about the Steel Maiden. Could she really have some connection with the Lance Maiden? Perhaps even with the woman who helped us during our August field study. sense someone inside. Given the circumstances, I imagine it must be one of the people who fought us in Ymir. Huh? It's open. It's empty. Weird. I could have sworn I sent someone in here. <sighs> oh.
Looking at her lying down like this, she really is just a child. Maybe 12 or 13? Somewhere close to Milliam's age. How did a kid like this end up fighting with the Alliance? Situation assessed. Location is a room inside the guest area of the Pentagruel. Nine hours have passed since initial loss of consciousness. Guess she's sleeping comfortably enough here. Then again, she needs it at her age. She's got plenty of growing left. Wait. Huh? Um, good morning? Reen Schwarzer, why are you here? Unless my memories have been tampered with, I believe this room was solely allocated to me. Oh, it was. Sorry, if I'd known you were sleeping, I wouldn't have come in here. So you're an intruder then? Clown Soleus. No, it was just an innocent mistake. Whoa, can we at least talk about this? No mercy for trespassers. So you claim to have no inappropriate motives for sneaking into this room? Not claim! I really didn't! But once you walked in... You fell victim to temptation and chose to act in accordance to your desires. No! No, I didn't! <sighs> How many times do I have to explain what happened before you'll believe me? I was making a joke. Had you any intention of harming me, Clown Soleus would have attacked you. That he didn't proves your innocence. <laughs> oh! Right. Then what was all that for? Ugh, oh, whatever. I suppose it's my own fault for coming in without permission. Anyway, I've cleared my name. I'll see you some other time, probably. If that's what you want to do, you didn't come to ask me anything then? Well... No. Honestly, I didn't even know you were in here. I do have a lot I'd like to ask you, though. And just as much I'd like to say to you. Hmm. Okay, if you're offering. What are your reasons for helping the Alliance? Why do you have a puppet just like Milliam's? Just who... Are you? Hmm. The answer to your first question is I was ordered to do so. As all information regarding Clown Soleus is confidential, I am unable to answer your second question. And as for the last one, I am unable to fully comprehend the depth of your question. Uh, oh, forget it. You abducted my sister and the princess. Whether you were ordered to or not doesn't change that. And it's not something I think I can forgive. See you around. Uh. <sighs> Sorry, that was probably too harsh. I can't pretend to know anything about your circumstances. But I do know that you didn't abduct them of your own free will. Uh. Anyway, with that said, I'll be going. Maybe we'll have a chance to talk again sometime. The Black Workshop. What? That's the name of the place I belong to. It was they who loaned me to the Noble Alliance. 
Unless you choose to join the Alliance, that is the most I'm able to disclose to you. The name doesn't ring any bells. And loaned? That makes it sound like... I suppose it's none of my business. <sighs> Thanks for telling me. I'll be sure to remember that name. I can't see doing so holding any real purpose for you. Incidentally, did you have any untoward motives behind what you just did? No, I did not. The Black Workshop? Loaned? Sounds like stuff worth remembering. Someone inside. Uh, what the? Huh? Oh, it's you. Forgot you were staying here, too. Yeah. What was that? It's gone now, anyway. Maybe it was just my imagination. So what's up? I couldn't give a damn whether you joined the Alliance or not, to be honest. Oh, I didn't come here for any specific reason. Interesting. You mixed by any chance? Could I sit and talk to you for a while? <sighs> what a pain in the ass. So, what do you want to ask? When we ran into each other back near Berea Hard, you asked a weird question. Something about being mixed? Oh, that? I didn't have the chance to figure out what that meant at the time. But what did you mean? Don't know if I can even explain that one. It's just something you feel. What we've got mixed into us is obviously different in strength and nature. It's kind of hard to put into words. <sighs> yeah. Seems that way. I know you're not trying to confuse me on purpose, but I really can't wrap my head around what you're saying. <sighs> Just watch. Huh? Uh. There's no trick to it. I'm not using an ornament, it's not magic. And I'm not using an artifact either. I just will fire to appear, and it does. So it's just a totally unnatural ability. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Something that just gives you results without the processes you'd usually have to go through to obtain them. You've got one too, right? Well... True. That power of mine wasn't something I gained from training. I don't even know where the power itself is coming from. It's the same kind of thing. People who can do things like that usually have something mixed into them. Something foreign, unnatural, mixed into their body itself. Different to the church's stigmas. Looks like a pretty small part of it in your case, though. Oh. There, huh? Anyway, I couldn't tell you how, where, or why whatever it is got mixed into you. Sure you've got more questions, but sorry. I can't answer them. 
No, it's okay. You've answered enough already. I feel like I understand myself a little better now, actually. <laughs> Good for you, I guess. So, we done now? Yeah, thanks for your time. Oh yeah, so how much of you is unnatural? Me? All of me. Hmm. His circumstances seem very different from mine. Guess all I can do is remember what he said. Maybe there will come a time when it'll all make sense. I'm sure one day I'll find out what this power of mine is. What the story behind me being given this power as a kid is. One day. I wonder who's in here? Hmm, we got a visitor? Come on in. Excuse me. <laughs> Figured it was you. Sup? Have a seat. Bourbon? I suppose not. Yeah, I really shouldn't. How come you guys are being so friendly, though? I mean, we're on opposing sides and all. <laughs> Why wouldn't we be? It's not like we're on a battlefield right now. We're Jaegers. Nothing unusual about us trying to cut some throats one day, then sitting in a bar with the same guys the next. Of course, if you would rather fight with us, that can be arranged. I shall have to politely decline. For one thing, I don't think I'd stand the slightest chance of taking you two down. Hey, now, no need to be so pessimistic. Fee seems to think pretty highly of you. Have a little more faith in yourself. At the very least, you'd be able to give us a real fight in your divine night. Not that I'd have any intention of losing, even then. The scary thing is, I'm pretty sure he's dead serious. Well, they're used to taking out tanks. They probably have their ways. Huh. Oh, yeah? Ranking 72nd for the year in an academy full of big shot students ain't half bad. <sighs> Brings a tear to my eye to see our little Fee putting her heart into her education. And don't forget, she was the youngest of her classmates too. The boss was right when he said that she can do anything she puts her mind to. You got that right. Maybe joining the gardening club will make her a bit more ladylike, too. Oh, who am I kidding? She's still young. She has plenty of time to develop on that front if she so pleases. <laughs> they really seem to adore her, like two proud parents talking about their child. Yet. If you don't mind me asking, why did you leave Fee behind? After your boss was killed in a battle with his sworn enemy, I mean. Oh, he told you about that. It sounds like you're closer to her than I thought you were. I trust this is simply me being paranoid. But you haven't tried making any moves on her, have you? No, of course not. I wouldn't dream of it. I just 
want to know why you'd abandon her when she obviously means so much to the two of you. She thought of you all like family. Why did you leave her all alone? Well... Hmm... We had our reasons. Let's leave it at that. I know you want to know, but you're not the one we should be telling that to. We'll be sure to tell Fee our reasons in due time. Until then, leave the issue be. Alright. I can accept that. Still, she's our classmate. In that sense, she's like family to me, to us, too. And we feel that way about her just as strongly as you do, if not more so. I want to be perfectly clear on that. <laughs> Fighting words right there. Still, we'll remember you said that. Returning to the matter at hand, you're sure you haven't tried to make any moves on her? Come on, spit it out! They really are like two overprotective fathers. I was hoping to get a bit more out of them about what Zephyr is up to. All we did was talk about Fee the whole time. <sighs> oh well. At least now I know that the guys in Zephyr really cared about her, so it wasn't a complete waste of time. <laughs>